Hey, how's it going everybody? So today I wanted to make a video showcasing my park that I used to get the Fast for a Biped trophy, which requires you to be a challenge mode park on hard difficulty or above in under four hours. As you can see here, my current time is three hours and 44 minutes and I have five stars. So, I also want to use this as a guide for you guys who are having issues with getting this trophy and hopefully give you guys some pointers on how you can uh, speed up the process just a little bit. So first things first, starting off, simply get yourself one viewing gallery and a Hammond Creation Lab. These are the ones that I started with. They're just simply right here. And if you build it like this, you can actually use these gates and you can open and shut them to allow you to use just one Creation Lab for multiple enclosures. So starting off, build it something like this, open up one gate, and then you're going to want to start getting fossils, specifically for the Struthiomimus. Struthiomimus should be your first priority when you first start off. They're super cheap, they're not hard to get, and they start generating you money rather quickly. As soon as you get to about 80% or so DNA for Struthiomimus, I'd recommend starting to try to get at least one or two out and then continue getting fossils until you get up to 100%. And then once you get to that point, pump out about eight Struthiomimus. What this will do is it'll start really generating you a lot of money rather quickly, and they're not very expensive to get out. After the Struthiomimus, my next recommendation would be the Edmontosaurus. You can put the Edmontosaurus in the same enclosure as the Struthiomimus. You can get about two of these, put those in there, and now your enclosure is really going to be generating you a lot of money. This is also going to start pushing you towards that, that one star mark. After the Edmontosaurus, I would highly recommend getting a Triceratops. You can sit here and make a second enclosure, and you're going to use this second enclosure for your uh, Ceratopsids. So, simply just close the first gate, open the second gate, if you create this right, and you can bring your Triceratops out and it'll go right over to this enclosure. For the Triceratops, you're going to want about three or four of them. So, you can see here that I really, I only have four enclosures total for the, uh, the entire park. The requirements, as you can see here, dinosaur rating wise, you need about 4,800 dinosaur rating, you need 16 species. And then the facility rating, that pretty much doesn't matter. All you need for facilities is actually just an arcade, a clothes shop, and a restaurant. If you kind of lay your park out similar to this, you can actually just put these restaurants and shops right here in the middle of your park, and it'll reach all of your park, and you won't need to do any more than just these. So I'm going to go through each of my exhibits here and show you the dinosaurs that I used to give you an idea of, of what dinosaurs seem to work. So let's go through here and we'll go one dinosaur at a time. So Archaeorhynthomimus, I have three of those. Now these ones are going to be your big money generating ones. Brachiosaurus, I have five of these in the same enclosure. Then we're going to have Camarasaurus, also in the same enclosure, five of them. Coming back over here, to this enclosure, you're going to have Corythosaurus. You're going to have three of those. And it's going to come back over here to our uh, big sauropods exhibit. Diplodocus. Diplodocus are big money makers. As soon as you can get these, I would highly recommend getting them out. You can have a lot of them. They are expensive, but they generate a lot of money and have a lot of rating to them. I recommend eight of them in the same enclosure, actually. Coming back over here, we already discussed two Edmontosaurus. Now, I'd also highly recommend using the different Mimuses, Gallimimus, Struthiomimus, and Archaeorhynthomimus. Just a couple Gallimimus, a couple Struthiomimus, a couple Archaeorhynthomimus. You can use all of those in the same enclosure, and they count as different species. They're super cheap, and they don't have much rating, but in order to get that species requirement up, you can use these to, to kind of boost that. I also put out a Hyungasaurus here. It seems to fit into this enclosure. It wasn't super expensive, and its requirements are pretty straightforward. Now this one, I rather like this enclosure. 
I use a lot of iguanodons. Their space requirements aren't very high, so you can actually make a pretty small enclosure. Just mess with your enclosure size once you get one in there and see what seems to work, and you'd be surprised how small of an enclosure works for them. So I put five iguanodon in this enclosure with five myosaurus, and then we're also going to put parasaurolophus in here as well. You can actually get six parasaur. So five iguanodon, five myosaurus, and six parasaurolophus all in the same enclosure. And then coming up here to the ceratopsids, we have three cynoceratops. Skip through the streakies here. We have three styracosaurus, three triceratops, and two taurosaurus. And those are the dinosaurs in my park. Those are all that you're going to need. So you can see here, these are the four enclosures that I used. Now this one's going to need to be fairly large for your uh, big sauropods, but this is going to be your big money-making one. Each one of these are worth quite a bit. So I'm going to go through now, and I'm going to show you the different researches that I clicked on, because you're not going to need to research everything in order to do this. In fact, you don't want to research everything, because it's going to take you too much time. The key to this is minimizing time spent on things that you're not going to use. So you're only going to want to go for fossils that, of the dinosaurs that you're actually going to use. Now you don't have to use the exact dinosaurs that I used, you can mix it up a little bit. I'm just showing you what worked for me. So you're going to need to research the Iguanodon, the Styracosaurus, the Archaeorhynthomimus, and the Cynoceratops. Now I did research Carnotaurus and uh, Giganotosaurus, but those I didn't even use those dinosaurs. For uh, genetics anyways, I simply just researched a couple uh, cosmetic skins here, and the traits that I usually use here are brain aging, which increases the lifespan, and aggressive instincts, which really boosts the, uh, the rating of the dinosaurs. Other than that, Cost you don't really need to use many other uh, genetic researches here. Skipping forward, when it comes to medical treatment, I will only research medical treatment when I have a lull time where I've researched other things and I'm just simply waiting on dinosaurs to come out and I haven't gotten to the next star yet, or if a disease happens in my park that I haven't researched yet. Otherwise, it's not necessary to research all of these, and it will take a lot of your time trying to research them. Global operations, you don't need to research anything in there. Building upgrades. I would recommend at least a couple success rate, because this will allow you to put a little bit of a modification on your dinosaur without worrying about it uh, failing. You really don't want to fail a dinosaur incubation on here. It's, it's not good if that happens. Incubation speed, I would recommend at least one of these, just simply so you can get dinosaurs out faster. And hatchery capacity is, is definitely going to be a must, so you can get out more dinosaurs at the same time. Something else that's going to be really, really important here is dig yield. I cannot stress enough how much dig yield is important here. As soon as you get to one star, you can research dig yield, and you need to apply that to your expedition center. What this is going to do is increase the amount of valuable resources that you get that you can sell. Things like gold and all those other minerals. Those things give you a lot of money. And in challenge mode, it's extremely important to get those because unlike your other income, those aren't taxed. You're also going to want to make sure you get your new dig teams as soon as you uh, get them available. Because these will obviously allow you to get fossils way faster. For your fossil center... Extraction speed, all the way. That's all you're going to need. Put three of these upgrades on your on your fossil center and just pump out extraction and uh, fossils as fast as you can. For the research, I would recommend research speed. It, uh, this will obviously allow you to research anything way faster. And then make sure you get your second and third research teams as soon as you possibly can. For buildings... The only buildings that you're actually going to need are clothes shop, restaurant, arcade. These will be your three shops. And the medium power station. 
Those are the only buildings you're going to need to research here. Everything else doesn't matter. And as far as enclosures go, really the only thing that you're going to need is a heavy steel fence. And if you want to, you can get the viewing platform. Now you can see here I researched the gyrosphere, but I never even used it. So the viewing platform isn't necessarily a ne uh, necessity, but it helps with the visibility. And other than that, that is all of the researches that you're going to need. So like I said, the, the key to this is just simply not wasting time on things that you're not going to need. I fell into that trap several times where I was just going fossil to fossil, extracting them, and I realized that I was coming up short because of it. So prioritize only the dinosaurs that you're actually going to use and minimize how much stuff you need to build. You can see here, it's pretty minimal the amount of things that I've built in this park, and yet I still reached that goal. And this is on Isla Matancero, so I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but uh, that would probably be helpful. I hope you guys found this guide in, uh, informative, and I hope that this is able to help some of you who are struggling with this. You don't have to follow this exact design if you don't want to. If some of these dinosaurs aren't your favorite, you can obviously switch them out for other ones. This is just what worked for me. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate you hitting that like button on there. And if this kind of content interests you, I would love to have you guys subscribe to me so I can uh, keep putting out content like this for people. Thanks for watching today. Hope you guys have a great day.